Hello all and welcome back to another model railway video. Now today I'm going to be having a look at some HO scale American locos by a company called Affian. Affian are a great model railway company. They produce some really really good products and they've been around for quite a long time. Originally their products were actually produced in America and this was during the 1980s and 1990s I believe. They produced some really really good models. They did a special range during that time in the 1990s that was known as Affian Special Edition. Now Affian Special Edition was pretty much their locos, their existing toolings like the models that they already had but with special liveries applied to them whether it was very rare liveries on locos in real life or simply liveries that were no more. They had been on locos but unfortunately they would either been removed or simply the locos had been scrapped by that time. Now I've got one of the sets here in front of me and this was the standard box that they had so every special edition set had this box. It was a blue box with an F7 on that side and I believe a GP40 on that side. I'm not sure what that one is. It looks like a GP40 but that was the box style and simply special edition along there and the only difference with the boxes was simply the product code which was on the end and explain what it was. So I'm going to save uh, what's inside till I actually open up to show you but what I'm going to be doing today is opening this up and actually assembling it. That's right, assembling it. With these models, with Affin's early American models, they were pretty much all ready to roll. So you could put them on the track and run it. But there were details that still had to be put on by whoever purchased them, such as like small details like the horns and the glass for the lights and the windows. And with the locos like this, like the GP40, the handrails were all had to be hand done as well. And the couplings had to be put on. So this set that I have here, I bought second hand, but it's never been used. So it's all brand new, ready to go. So it'll be just like the 1990s again, getting one of these sets out and actually assembling it. And as a result of being special edition, a lot of people ended up buying these sets and never made them up. They just left them in the box and kept them good. So every Affian special edition set that I've bought, and I've now bought quite a few of them, they've all been in mint condition, never been used. So... I've changed it, of course, because I like to run stuff. But yeah, that's what's going to be happening today. I'm going to be actually technically building part of a train and then showing you what they look like running. So without further ado, I will now put the camera in a better spot and we'll open this box up and show you what's inside. Here we go. So here we go, the big reveal. And if I do get any more Affin Special Edition sets that I want to do videos on, I'll probably do the same thing as what I'm doing now and leave revealing the items tool. I actually take the lid off. So here are the models. And as you can see, they are Santa Fe F7 models. And they're in a very unusual pair of liveries. So I'll show you what they are. We have the yellow bonnet on the front of this one which looks really really cool and the blue bonnet which is another very very neat livery. I've seen the blue on Santa Fe's but never with the silver like how the red and silver are technically done. It looks really really neat and the yellow looks great as well. So these models are not both motorized so we've got one powered unit which is this one and one dummy unit as you can see there by the plastic wheels which are included on this one and when you look at these up close you wouldn't think that there is a whole ton that you've actually got to do to get them going you can see obviously there's no couplings you can also see from the top there's holes for the air horns there's a few other little bits and pieces on these like you've got to probably put the glass in for the lights at the front. I would imagine maybe a bit of perspex for the window or something like that. There's not a dreadful amount of things you've got to do in terms of assembling an F7, but for locos that have handrails on the side, it's a bit of a different story, as eventually when I do a video on one, you'll find out very quickly. So what I'll do is I'll get all the packaging out, I'll get the paperwork out and these, which are the little detail bags which you have all the things that go on the locos and I'll get it all out set out and then I will start the process of having a close look at these and then assembling them so we'll get into it 
So there we are, that is all the contents out of the box. The two locos, the paperwork and the detail bags. So I'll start off having a look at the locos as they are in the unassembled condition. And as you can see for locos that were from around the 1990s, these are really, really well detailed. I'm really impressed with how these look for the era they were built. So, the blue bonnet number 332, and this has actually got a name, there's the name there, I don't know if you can see it, it's called Argentine, I believe, and this is really cool, it's great to have some special units with actual names on them, it's quite neat. So, it's pretty much exactly the same as the typical Santa Fe Chiefs um, red and silver livery, but instead of the red, you have got the blue which looks really, really cool. It's a bit of a change. It looks really nice with the silver and the yellow lining going along there as well. So, typical Santa Fe logo on the front. That looks really cool. Nicely done number boards. Nice vent detail going along the side there. Really, really good lining. The trucks underneath, they're really well detailed. They've got all the bits and pieces there. Tons of rivet detail. Like There's heaps going around the edge of the logo. You can sort of see a bit where the blue and the silver meet on this particular one. The yellow one, I haven't noticed it, but with this, you can see sort of a light blue line where the silver meets. It's not the best on it, but it could be worse. But yeah, definitely it's, it's visible, especially here where the name Argentine is on the side there. But I'm, I'm not complaining, it looks pretty good. Check the other side, actually, I haven't had a look. It's actually a little bit better on the side. You can still see it faintly, but it's still there. This side, though, you can definitely, it's a lot more prominent. As you can see, these are quite solid. Like, if you look through there and see that bit of gold there, that's the size of the flywheel. They're massive. In fact, what I will do at some point during the video, of course, when I have to assemble the details, I'll likely take the body off this one so you can actually have a look at the inner workings because these Athian Locos, they were built strong. And I tell you what, when you see the components that are in these, they're not small components. They're quite big. Very interesting, the inside one of these. But yeah, so that's what the blue bonnet one looks like. And here's the yellow bonnet one. And as I said before, this is the dummy unit. So this is a lot lighter as a result. And it does have plastic wheels, and it's hollow on the inside, pretty much. But the chassis is made of metal, so that gives it a bit of weight. So, in terms of the detail on this one, this, again, is like the red and silver Santa Fe's, but the difference is it has got blue um, lining on the front for where the Santa Fe logo is. But another difference is, with the blue one here, and with the red ones, typically the lining, there'll be a stripe that will go over the top of the bonnet on the front. Whereas with this one, it's just simply going around there. So it makes the top look a bit barren. And it looks really interesting, this look. I, I think it looks really, really cool having it just there so the whole top bit is empty. It looks really, really nice. And then that full, big yellow stripe going along the side there, it looks really cool. It's, I like how... The blue one has the broken colours go along the side there and they're separate, but having that solid yellow line, it just looks really cool to me with the silver. It looks really, really nice. There's a little bit of black just going along the edge of it around there. And that looks really good. And this one's also got a name. It's Cleburne, I think. Oh, correct me if I'm wrong pronouncing that, but yeah, that's what I get out of that name. And the number is 315, so 315. And again, pretty much exactly the same detail. And that's the thing about these models. Like I said, the tooling with them was pretty generic. They were exactly the same tooled models, but with just different liveries applied. So these um, body styles and that would have been on their standard range as well with the standard colours and that. The only difference with these is just the livery. There's not really... I don't think there's any other differences besides the livery, it's just their standard tooling. So yeah, that is the models themselves, and these are the bits we're going to have to add onto them, and I'll get to those in a moment, but I thought it would be best to have a look through the actual manual to show you where these actually go on the locos. So this is the very big 
diagram of all the bits on this loco. So you've got a full exploded diagram of all your gearbox, your framework, the light bulbs, the motors, and all of the individual components that make up the drive shafts. You've got the top uh, frame that goes over the top of the motor to add weight. And then you have the body itself. And as you can see, the details, there's not that many that you've got to add to F7, as I said before. There's the horns, as I mentioned. Uh, what's that say? Body undecorated. Oh, that's just the different... Um, body styles, it's not the lights, I thought it was the lights, but you add the little bits of clear plastic into the lights as well, I'm pretty sure on this model anyway, and yeah it's got different part numbers listed there and all the bits and pieces, so very standard manual for the F7 A and B's, so this counted the B units as well within this manual, so yeah that's that. Now this is the interesting bit of paperwork that comes with these and this is what I think is really really cool that side's blank but this side it has a full history of these two specific locos and it tells a bit about the Santa Fe F7s and then it has a bit of history about the individual units themselves so it starts off with the yellow one first and then it talks about the blue one and the blue one was actually destroyed by a fire. So, yeah, very interesting. I was reading a little bit about this earlier because I, I like reading these. There's some really good information there. So, if you get one of these, have a good read. is because they are worth having a look at. And if any of you guys want to have a read of this, I'm more than happy to take a photo of it and put it through on a separate film on the YouTube channel. If you can, let me know and I can do that easily. So, that is the paperwork of the model. These detail bags are the next step. So we'll open one up, they'll be exactly the same. It's kind of sad opening these up after all of these years of them um, being sealed. In fact I'm not going to open it there. Sorry, just destroying something that's totally unnecessary. It's the wrong bit I was meant to rip open. Right, I'm just going to do that, that way I can put things back in if I need to. Whoa! Flip! There's a bit more there than what I thought there was going to be actually. Oh, and I've just lost one of the light things off the edge of the bench. Sorry, I'm going to have to go and grab that. So, I retrieved the little light purse bit that fell on the ground. And I've also taken the opportunity, while I had the camera off, to get a few things organised. So, I've separated all of the components out. And there's a lot more than I remember assembling on my other Affin Special Edition F7s that I have got. I couldn't believe all of this fell out of the packet. I was expecting just the horns and the bulbs and the um, couplings. I completely forgot about the steps that go on the bogies and the other bit of bogey detail there. So, in terms of fitting the stuff, I'm pretty sure you don't really need glue. You can glue them on if you want, but from the past experience that I've had doing these, I've never had to bother gluing any of the components in, except for handrails. They have been the only ones I've had to put a bit of glue on, on occasion to do things. And the handrails as well, on other models, are generally made of just steel so they do tend to rust and corrode a bit if they've been sitting for a long time so generally you have to paint them as well in that regard so that requires a bit more work obviously but I've also taken the opportunity to separate the body from the chassis and to show you what an absolutely chunky motor and flywheels this thing features this particular version of the F7 it doesn't actually have that bit that goes over the top to add the weight which I was a bit surprised about because all the other ones I've got have that but uh, at the same time I don't think it needs it because this chassis weighs an absolute ton it's not going to have any problems with traction it's a really hefty chassis so in terms of the details I'm now going to grab the body and I'm going to fit them I'm just going to do the details just on this unit I'm going to do those separately and then put it on the layout just saves a bit of time on the videos because once I've done it on one it's pretty much the same procedure. So I'll start with the horns. This is easy. I'll tell you what, you can glue these if you want as I say but they've been designed with quite a bit of fitness on them so when you push them in they're not going to come out again that easily. In fact those are really solid and firm. So that's one of those horns done. 
grab the other one and all you do is just sit it in the gap that one's going to be very tight actually and there's a dog barking outside making a racket and you just give it a push there we go so that is the horns fitted and they look quite good they're not the same color as the top of the cab is with the blue but they still look really nice okay let's insert the glass so these some of them you do need to glue from what I've seen is because some don't lock in that well these ones are that's gone in really nice and we'll do that one and as you can see it's it's not that hard doing these there's a little bit of, of fur from the plastic Oop, lost it again what is it with me and lights got it back so Let's take that again, see if it'll go in. Look at that, just popped in like that, it was easy. So now I'm not going to lose those again. Just to test it, no, nope, they're still there. And what a difference they make, and what I really like is how these have been done. They've got that small tiny dot inside them, which is part of the way the uh, mould has been done, and it makes it look like it's got the actual bulb inside. That's a really cool feature, and it just brings the whole head of the loco to life it looks so much better and that is all the details that actually go on the body itself the rest of it is all to do with the chassis so as you can see the f7s there's not a lot you need to do in all honesty with the body so the chassis i will do just one of these to show you what it looks like and then i'll do the others separately before i run the loco but i'll grab these off the molds you can also um, go around these with a little scalpel or crafting knife just to get rid of some of the excess plastic on them from the, the joints to the moulds. I'm not going to bother us because I've broken that off pretty clean. But these go right on there. And then they just push in. And there we are, all done. So off camera I put the other three on. So that is one thing that will speed up the process a little bit quicker. So as you can see, they look really nice on the trucks there and so yeah it's part of the mount that goes around the step I'm not sure of the exact name of the component but that's where it goes so yeah I'll now move on to the next bit which is also to do with the trucks and it is these which are to do with the brakes now these are a little bit more fiddly to get off so I'm just simply going to break that one off it's come off very clean, I'm very happy about that. It's just a tiny little cylinder component. And these go on here. And that is what they look like. And once again, they are done as well. So that's what they look like on the side of each of the trucks. And they were nice and quick and easy to assemble. And again, I have not used any glue at all to assemble this, yet all the components are staying completely in place without any risk of them falling off. If you want to be 100% sure, feel free to glue these in place if you really want to. But for me, I have not really found a need to do it. There are other components that sometimes do stay loose that may need a bit of glue on them but for me I've not encountered any of that with this model which is fantastic and now with the couplings added on that is the assembly complete and I'm sorry that I didn't actually show you how to do this but this is really easy the coupling but as simply as you just put the coupling on you put the box just over the top just push it on clips on easy as anything and that is pretty much it now as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, these locos come with the old style horn hook couplers. If they spring back well, they are all right. They'll stay connected together, but they don't look the most realistic. But if they get stuck like that and stay open when going around a corner, they will disconnect from wagons or other locos. So I'm going to show you these just for the trial run, well, the inaugural run of this thing. And... Um, after that I'll probably take them off and put knuckles on before I do a proper video of these running. But all I'm going to be doing today is just showing you backwards and forwards on the American layout what these look like. And eventually I'll probably get around to doing a proper running session with these featured in it. So what I'll do now that that one there is all completed, 
I will do the same on this one off camera and then I will head over to the layout and show you what these locos look like once they're all complete. Right, so now both locos are down on the layout and it's time to test the powered unit out and I'll get the dummy unit out of the siding afterwards to give it a go as well. Now one thing I have noticed immediately when I put these on the track is I don't think they're going to cope well with curves due to one thing. I put the dummy unit on the curved siding which is over there and I found it very hard to get on and I realised that the cylinders that I've put on, which I'll, I'll grab the powered one to show you, the cylinders for the brakes on here, I'm pretty sure they're called dynamic brakes, I'm not sure, but um, those cylinders catch on those steps on the front unit there. So you can see when it's turning, the that part there is hitting it. So that isn't that great. It's a bit disappointing because I'm probably going to actually have to take those off in order to run the loco around my track. Which I don't really want to do because I want to have the, the details on. But um, yeah, at this stage I don't think it's going to cope with curves. But that's what this is for. We'll give it a test and see what happens. So with some power, there it goes. It works. That's good. Fords. That's good. Well, it runs on straight, it's beautiful. Now, I'm going to run it just past the camera. Let's see if it comes off. Yeah, it did. Yeah, because there's a curve literally just around the side here. Oh dear. So, yeah, if you are going to get hold of one of these sets, if you have an opportunity, just bear that in mind, that the moment it hits a curve, if you've got the cylinders on there, it's not going to work. So what I'm going to do now, before I go any further, I'm actually going to take those cylinders off and see if it can negotiate a curve. So, the moment I took those cylinders off the side of where the steps were, Watch this. It copes with the curve with no problem whatsoever. So that was clearly what the issue was why it wouldn't go around the curves. Because now it's totally fine. So that's just something to bear in mind that those cylinders do get in the way of the steps. And when I look at how close the actual truck is without those cylinders on, it's still very close on Backman easy track anyway. On a wider curve you may get away with using those cylinders but certainly not on the easy track which is a shame. I would have liked to have had all of them on but that's just going to have to be how it runs is because it won't run the other way. I'll have a look at possible ways of modifying it to suit but I don't really want to spoil the look of the locos so at the moment I've just simply taken them off and I'm just going to run it without them. So, yeah, just bear that in mind if you do find one of these sets. That could be an issue for you. So, overall though, besides that, the Loco, for its age, considering it's been sitting all that time, that's a very, very good performer. I'm really pleased with that. It looks really nice. I'm really happy. The dummy unit, of course, if it was powered, would look just as good. And what I might eventually do is get a powered chassis to go underneath it. But for now, it is just going to be the blue one which will be powered. What I'll do to end things off though, is I will connect the dummy unit onto the back of this one and give it a quick run by the camera. So there we go, that is the final result. Both locos coupled together and they look really good. The one thing I have noticed is the second unit is a little bit stiff. It's probably been sitting for so long. I might give it a couple of drops of oil on the axles just to free it up. But the powered unit is having absolutely no problems in towing it. And they do look really, really neat back to back as well. So there we go, folks. That is the Affian Special Edition Pack number 2222, which features the two F7s from the Santa Fe Railroad with the blue bonnet and the yellow bonnet and these are absolutely fantastic models. It is a shame that, that those cylinders to do with the brakes on the side do prevent the loco from going around tight curves. 
So if that is something that phases you a bit and you want to have the full thing of all the cylinders and all the details on it, be very careful when looking into getting one of these if it does pop up and you are tempted to get it is because from what I found they do not go around the curves with those cylinders that are in behind the steps fitted. The front ones are still on and they do not have a problem, it's just because of the steps. The one modification you could do which I wouldn't recommend doing is simply taking the steps off if you want to leave the cylinders on but that of course is also going to spoil the model in another way is because the steps are then gone. So my suggestion is if you do want to get one of these and you want to do it the easiest way possible, simply don't fit those cylinders on the side if it's not going to phase you in terms of the detail. There's probably another modification you can do and if you get a real wide radius curve they'll probably work but I, I don't know because I don't have really wide curves to test it on but definitely tight radius, it's, um, it's not going to work that great. But in terms of how these locos look and perform, they're really good. The dummy just needs a little bit of oil on it, but that's not a problem. But considering that the powered unit, considering how long it has been sitting, it hasn't been ever run. So it's probably 1997 to 2024. How many years is that? That's it's a while now. It's over 20 years. I can't work it out off the top of my head. But yeah, that's it's been sitting for a long time and for... The starting performance, how that started off like that, is pretty smooth. It's really, really cool. But yeah, really, really great models. So there we are. I hope you've enjoyed this small video, folks. I thought it would be quite inter interesting to do something like this for a change. Just having a look at how some bits on a loco actually go together. And these... It's a very common thing for the Affian Blue Box and, of course, the Affian Special Edition to have this system where you've got to put bits on before you can actually properly run them. Like They're ready to run out of the box, most of them, but they will still need detailed parts added. Of course, the couplings need to be added before you run them. In a way, I'm quite pleased that they haven't fitted the couplings permanently. Well, they haven't fitted them when the models arrive is because... If you want to put knuckle couplers on, you can do that from the start. You can simply switch them in, which is a very good feature. Very good. I hope you've enjoyed the video, folks. There will be plenty more videos on the way. Likely British stuff again. I thought just do something American just to change things up a little bit. But if you are keen on seeing more American stuff featured, please let me know in the comments. And I certainly will try my best to include some more American locos, whether it's HO or N scale whatever suits you guys just let me know in the comments and i can see what i can do very good hope it's been enjoyable folks have a great rest of your day bye for now